Okay, so now we're going to look at how do we go about balancing redox equations. And this is something, as I said before, you should have encountered in general chemistry one. So this should be a bit of a review to you. So we're going to start off with an example. I think this is the best way to learn how to do these type of exercises. So the question here, or an example, is that you're given the fact that Fe2 plus iron 2 will be oxidized to iron 3 by using the dichromate ion, Cr2O72 minus. Now, admittedly, there's some missing information here, which it would not be fair for you to, um, to know. So let me add it here, that one of the products of the reaction would be, um, would be the, the, the chromium 3 plus ion. So I'm just going to add here Cr3 plus is also a product of this reaction, all right? Because you're going to need that in order to answer this question. Okay, so let's see how we go about doing this. So the first step in this process is that we separate, um, we write on an unbalanced equation for this particular reaction. So we simply identify what the reactants are, what the products are, and place them in their proper places in the unbalanced equation, which would be as shown here. So Fe2 plus is one of the reactants, the dichromate is the other reactant, and these are the two products, all right? So that's the first step. Now the second step is that you separate this equation into two half equations. So one of the half equations would be the oxidation, which would be the conversion of the Fe2 plus to the Fe3 plus, and then the other half equation would be the reduction half equation where the dichromate is converted to the chromium 3 ion, all right? The next step is that we identify all atoms accepting oxygen and hydrogen, and we balance them, all right? Now, what that means for the first half equation is nothing. We don't make any changes here, and that's because, obviously, it is already balanced. We have one ion on this side, one ion on that side, all right? On the other hand, in the case of the dichromate being converted to the chromium ion, we have to make some changes here because we have a two here, which indicates that there are two chromiums right here, and we have only one here. So that means that we need to put, put a coefficient of two here in front of the chromium three plus. So the result would be, as you can see there, all right? So that's the third step. Now, in some cases, you may need to balance the atoms in both half equations, all right? In which case you need to make some changes as far as the oxidation half equation is concerned. But in this particular case, we don't need to because it's already balanced, all right? Okay, so that's the third step. We balance all atoms other than oxygen and hydrogen. Now, the next step involves balancing the oxygens and the hydrogens, right? So it says here, for reactions in acids, and this is very important. For reactions in acids, we need to add water to balance the oxygen atoms, and we add hydrogen ions to balance the hydrogen atoms. So this is the equation right here, which results from balancing the oxygens, right? Because you'll notice that we have seven oxygens here on the left side. So to balance the oxygens, we need to add seven water molecules because by adding seven water molecules on the right side, we're balancing the oxygens because now we have seven oxygens as a result. To balance the hydrogens, we need to add hydrogen ions. Now on this side, we had 14 hydrogen atoms, right? So that means to balance the hydrogens, we add 14 hydrogen ions on the left side, all right? So now we have balanced the oxygens by adding water to the side that needs it, and we balance the hydrogens by adding hydrogen ions to the side that is deficient of hydrogen. Okay, so the next step is where we balance the charges. And let me just say that this step is very often the step that a lot of students tend to make errors on. So I'm going to be very slow and deliberate in terms of explaining what we do in this case. So you'll notice that in both half equations, the charges are not balanced. For example, in this half equation, which represents the reduction half equation, you'll notice that you have a total charge of minus two here, and you have a total charge of two times three plus six here, all right? Um, actually, I'm sorry, let me use this equation right here. So the total charge on this side is plus six, but the total charge on the left side is 14 plus charge, minus two, so that's a total of plus 12, right? So the charges are not balanced. You have a total of plus 12, let me write this down here, 
you have a total of plus 12 on this side and plus 6 on this side, all right? We need to achieve a balance where we have the total charges on this side being equal to the total charge on this side. How do we do that? We do that by adding electrons to the side with the higher net charge. So in this case here, it is the left side which has the higher net charge. So therefore, we need to add six electrons to this side because by adding six electrons, let me do that here, we're adding six negative charges here, and that reduces the total charge on the left side to plus six, which balances with the plus six on this side. So let me just show you um, that here, right? So basically, that's how we balance the charges for the second half equation, for the reduction half equation. For the oxidation half equation, it's easier because in this case here, we have a plus two charge on this side. We have a plus three charge on this side. So this side is higher. And therefore, that means we add one electron here to this side to reduce the total charge on the right side from plus three to plus two, which balances with a plus two on the left side. All right. So that's basically how we balance the charges. All right. So um, the next step is where we ensure that we achieve something that I talked about before. Remember, I said before that for every redox reaction, the total number of electrons lost and gained must be the same. If you take note in this case right here, we have one electron being lost here in the oxidation half reaction, and we have six electrons being gained here in the reduction half equation. So obviously, the number of electrons are not balanced. So what we need to do now in step number six, and this is if necessary, because there are some cases where at this stage, the number of electrons will be the same. It says, if necessary, we equalize the number of electrons in the two half equations by multiplying the half equations by appropriate coefficients. So basically what we need to do is multiply both of these half equations by certain integers such that the number of electrons lost and gained would be the same. Now, what that means in this case is that we multiply this half equation here by six, because when we multiply all through by six, we're going to end up with six electrons here, which balances with the six electrons on the right side, or on the left side, I should say, for the second half equation. So when we do that, we're going to basically end up with this here, right? We have to multiply the entire equation by six, so we end up with this half equation, all right? And then now, the next step is that we add both equations together, and of course, when we add two half equations together, we have to cancel out the common items on both sides. In this case, that would be the six electrons here and here. Um, so that's what we're gonna do here. When we add these two equations together, the six electrons here and here will cancel out and we write down what is left, right? And what is left would be the net equation under acidic conditions. And what I normally recommend my students to do when they get this final equation is to check to make sure that everything is balanced, including the charges. So um, basically, you'll see that um, you have 14 hydrogens on the left side, seven times two, 14 hydrogens on the right side, so that's balanced. We have two chromiums on the left. Whoops, never meant to do that. Let me back up a bit. We have two chromiums on the left, two chromiums on the right. We have seven oxygens on the left, and we have seven oxygens here on the right. We have six ions here, six ions here. And then as far as the charges are concerned, that's what this line is all about. Uh, we have 14 plus charges, minus two, plus six times two, which is 12. So when we add that up, we're gonna get 24. And if you do the same thing for the other side, it's six times three, 18 plus six, and that gives you 24 as well. So basically this would be the balanced equation for this particular redox reaction under acid conditions. Now, we can also write down an equation for the same redox occurring, but under basic conditions, right? And basically to get that equation, we have to make some changes to this equation right here. So basically to do that, that's what step nine is all about. It says for reactions in basic conditions, we add hydroxides to both sides of the equation for every hydrogen ions that appear in the final equation. So what I'm gonna do is get out of this and show you that is done. And the way that is done, um, let me go here. So this is the equation that I just showed you. 
That's a balance equation under acidic conditions. So to convert this into the equation under basic conditions, as we said in step nine, we add the same number of hydrogen, hydroxide ions to both sides as the number of hydrogen ions. So in this case, we have 14 hydrogen ions. So we're gonna add 14 hydroxide ions to both sides. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So this is 14 hydroxide ions, right? Now the thing is, every time you have a hydrogen ion combining with a hydroxide ion, you're gonna end up with a water molecule, right? So what that means is that in this case, when the 14 hydrogen ions combine with the 14 hydroxide ions, you're gonna end up with 14 water molecules. And therefore what's gonna happen is that these seven water molecules will cancel out seven of these, and therefore the net equation under basic conditions will be seven water molecules plus the dichromate ion plus six Fe2 plus, and that's on the left side. And then on the right side, we're gonna have, there should be a plus sign here. And then on the right side, you're gonna have six Fe3 plus, plus two chromium ions, plus 14 hydroxide ions, all right? And that should be the equation on the basic condition. So this equation that we started off with here is the equation for the redox reaction under acidic conditions, all right? But this is for the basic conditions, all right? So that's basically how we do that. That is something, as I said before, you should have covered in CHEM 1. So this should be a bit of a, of a review. Now the next video, or a couple of videos maybe, there will be some examples. I'm gonna go through some other examples so that you can get a good feel for how to do this um, type of exercise, all right? Okay, so that's it for now. Until next time.